let's talk about some of the funnier myths first, perhaps. Uh, does anybody know whether what? Oh, does anybody know whether or not actually marijuana makes men grow boobs? Uh, Have you heard about that one? It hasn't happened to me yet. Got a master. No? Anybody? Yeah, that's a total no. That was, uh, they were trying to make the connection between marijuana causing munchies, people eating too much, and therefore it causes uh, men to grow breasts. But overeating causes men to thicken up in that part of their anatomy, and uh, that's really what they're talking about. The fact sure. of the matter is, even that, they said that women became more masculine and men became more feminine and for marijuana, both of which are not true. Not true. It's just really that the women stopped shaving their legs so much. <laughs> yeah. So they appeared to be a little more masculine, uh -huh. but not really. Alcohol makes men look pregnant. So alcohol makes say that, pregnant, you know, so. it doesn't require it doesn't mean alcohol needs to be illegal. So would you rather have big boobs or a beer belly, fellas? That's what I'm asking you at that point. Big boobs. Yeah, huh? That's right. Because it gets cold out here. In Seattle. Where the hell are we? Uh, anybody have any questions? Yes. Does marijuana make you paranoid? Does marijuana make you paranoid? Well, the federal drug laws against marijuana make me kind of paranoid. That's really what happens, but well, we've, I, I definitely think that because of the law that there is anxiety that, that builds, that can build, especially if you're not someone maybe that, that smokes it often enough, you're at a party and you feel like you're doing something bad or wrong, I can see that happening, but there definitely is, I have a number of friends over the years, people that I've known for a long time, that seem to, to reach a point, I've heard it anecdotally too many times to think that it's, it's just spurious or, or fabricated. It, there are certain people that that will happen for and it's the case that if, if that happens to you then perhaps you should either cut back try a different strain you remember there's sativas there's you know indicas there's there's you know different strains push put out there and find one that you're comfortable with you know and uh and talk to experts about this that also, too this is also a place where research sometimes gets misused for instance there is some work on the marijuana causes psychosis notion which comes out of new zealand where they have among other things people were asked a handful of basically it's a survey and ask, ask a handful of questions if you give the wrong answers to some of the questions you get diagnosed um i know that's a shorthand version but ultimately that's what it comes down to the analysis gets done by the professionals which is why it becomes a diagnosis instead of just a set of answers to a bunch of kind of easily misinterpreted questions. But one of the questions they ask is about, you know, psychosis, whether or not a person is, has feelings of, you know, being persecuted, being followed, being, and all that. And to now to conduct this research, they have recruited peers, fellow students, teachers, the parents, other people who know these young people, to follow them around and report on their daily lives. And they ask the question, do you feel you're being followed around or persecuted? Oh no, not at all. Everyone I know is reporting on me. But aside from that, it's all good. You'd have to be crazy not to think you were being investigated, you were being persecuted, because you are. <laughs> but you the answer, yes. Uh -huh. See, and that's where the, I mean, it's, it's, the research gets messed up. That particular research, by the way, a large proportion of the people, sorry, but a large proportion of the people involved were Maori descent in New Zealand, which, I don't know if you're familiar, but the cultural genocide perpetrated in New Zealand and in Australia on the Aboriginal and Indigenous peoples makes what we did seem, seem tame in comparison. And so the notion that some of those people might be suffering from some kind of problems of not fitting in, etc., it's like, well, you know, ask your parents' kids if they can answer, if they can tell you the definition of no shit Sherlock. You know, that's so anyway. Yeah, and also anecdotally, uh, I know some people, myself included, there was a while when I would smoke pot and I would have some anxiety and feel a little paranoid. And then I realized that maybe I should just handle my personal business a little better and I wouldn't have shit to worry about. Um, so I use it as a you know stepping stone to improve my life. But that's because I trust marijuana implicitly. Well, I'm not ready to give it a hundred. I'm a weirdo. I'm not ready to give it a hundred percent pass on this to tell you the truth. There you go. One reason is because. Uh, you know, a lot of people when they're driving in particular, if they smoke marijuana, they start, they're really worried about their driving. So they try not to drive and they drive more slowly and they make sure everything is more clear. That's really a manifestation of your paranoia that you might be too impaired to drive, even though you're actually okay at driving. What you call it a paranoia or an anxiety? Like a well, that's what I'm saying. It depends what you mean with paranoia. I mean, paranoia is an extreme, but it's a little similar thing. And the other thing that I know for sure is that because marijuana makes people's heart beat faster, is that people, especially if they eat it, that they might think they're having a heart attack because their heart is pounding so fast. And so they're, I think that a lot of times it's that speeded up heartbeat that people, because of being excited and being in a different situations, cause your heart to beat up, uh, beat, to speed up. When people feel their heartbeat speeding up, they think 
that they're reacting emotionally when in fact it's just a physiological thing. And we also see that with people who fall in love after having a traumatic experience because they're in such a state of... Uh, there are chemical reactions that happen to your body when you yeah. ingest the substance. Well, that, that doesn't have anything to do with ingesting the marijuana. I'm saying that people who like have a near-death experience will often fall in love with somebody else who goes through the same thing because, sure. because they feel this connection and it has to do with this... this uh, they're, they're mistaking their excitement about being alive with, I think I'm in love. But with marijuana, it's different. Love and, uh, uh, produces a lot of the same chemicals in your brain as a near-death experience, so... Yeah. <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you still kind of young. And some of you have been in relationships for a while. Yeah, but I think it can make paranoia worse for some, some people, but for most people, no. Well, I hope that answered your question. Any other questions? Or are you afraid to ask them now? Who's watching? Is anyone here in the CIA? Cannabis Inhalers Association? Me? I'm the only one. Two. Two people. Three people. No questions. No one? I have a list of myths. Chris has a list of myths. How about that? Everybody, Chris Conrad and his list of myths. Well, so anyway, so my list of things that I had put breasts on there and paranoia, actually, is two of them. But the other one is, does marijuana cause lung cancer? Uh, and the answer to that is a good, solid no. No. There's always been a lot of uh, claims about this that had to do with a study that was done in the... Uh, what year was that when they did this? Dr. Donald Tashkin. That was in the late 80s. Dr. Donald Tashkin did a study, and he found that one portion of your brain, of your lung has more uh, immediate response to marijuana than it does to tobacco. So they excluded the rest of the lung system. They excluded cancer. They excluded all the diseases, and they just focused on that one area and said marijuana is four times more damaging to the lungs. Then the, once the media got hold, it became like it's the equivalent of smoking four packs of cigarettes, which is quite different again. And, uh, and there were specific reasons that he said that it, that the damage was being caused, the short-term damage that marijuana seemed to cause more so than tobacco. Those being, you hold it in your lungs too long and you take too big of a breath. Let, let's, let's address that for a moment. My understanding is that the new protocol, uh, because I mean, a lot of us are very old school where you take the big puff and you sit there and you hold it and you turn red, and then you're not really sure if it's the weed or just lack of oxygen that's giving you the buzz at that point. Uh, my understanding is that really the new, the, the most effective method these days is just to take a simple inhalation and then exhale it out very clearly so that the air doesn't sit around and get stale. You'll get uh, most of the THC and the chemicals involved in the smoke anyway. It was just uh, the oxygen capillaries or What's that? It was just the oxygen starvation. John Morgan, rest his soul, was, uh, you know, explained very clearly with the chart and all that, the dose response, you absorb THC by percentage. You've absorbed a lot of it within the first few seconds. And you're not really getting any extra benefit, much of an extra benefit. So there you go, you learned something new. You know, one, one thing, I think maybe we should even start out with this one before we get too deep, and it seems to me the crux, you know, the, the one that it's used the most against us as a movement, and that is that notion that marijuana is a gateway drug, a drug sure. that, that somehow inspires you to use it's other harder drug drugs. It's a gateway drug to naps and snacks. Well, there, I think, most definitively, uh, as far as studies that, that I'm aware of, <clears throat> It was really in response to, in California, the Prop 215 medical marijuana coming online, uh, you know, strat behind the scenes, those working against the strategize, they said, well, let's get a study out there that'll show this linkage. And uh, it was at the well, behest even, of even, Barry McCaffrey. Even before that, uh, oh, yeah. in like fourth, fifth grade, they're always, if you start smoking pot, then you're going to be a heroin addict. Within For a sure. Year. That's, that's all, it's always sure. been that way. And that's it's why it's such a deep-seated myth. And that's why, it's, well, it's why it's so hard to get rid of. It's yeah. been around so long. It's been repeated too many times. Remember, most of society is like Pavlovian dogs. You say it seven times, they're going to believe it, repeat it, spread it to friends, take it to heart. But the fact of the matter is, in 1998, at the behest of Barry McCaffrey, our nation's drugs are at the time. There was a study done by the Institute of Medicine, which is part of the National Academy of Sciences. It's hard to imagine uh, a more, you know, uh, you know, a better group to do such a study. It, it's it's clear they're extremely professional and listened to. Well, that came out, and they they said definitively that there are no compounds within marijuana that, once ingested, would lead the, the body to, have to behave in a physical way that craves other drugs. It's simply put that way. But you know what I love about the study is it went a bit further. And, uh, and, and it's wonderful. Please remember this. It, they can actually we said... Can this? Can we find this report on your website? or we're uh, on Yeah, it's on the drug library. We have the world's uh, largest drug library at our site. So if you go to stopthedrugwar.org on the, on the right-hand side, you'll see the, the link to the library. But, but one thing they did say was that it was the market structure, that when you talk about gateway and being able to lead into other drugs, it was the case that because it's illegal, 
that prohibition provides an outlet for uh, a marijuana dealer to say give to a 16 or 17 year old person 